Hey guys, welcome to another A-level physics P5 video. And I guess this will be the fifth video I've done on A-level physics P5. Hopefully this will be successful and you will find it to your liking. Um, so a student wishes to investigate projectile motion. Right? And we have a small ball. Um, and it is rolled with velocity v along a horizontal surface so this is the horizontal surface and this is a small ball and this is the velocity vector that is representing the velocity of the ball right and this small ball is basically ruled with velocity v so when the ball reaches the end it falls right and lands on a lower horizontal surface and the vertical dis displacement of the ball is p right that is the vertical displacement and the horizontal displacement over here is q and this is like represented in the diagram for you to see and it is suggested that this is a relationship between the vertical and the horizontal displacement at a velocity v let me just snip this part. This is all very interesting, isn't it? So, what sort of quantities do we have over here? And we have G, which is like the width. This is uh, my apologies. Q, which is like the horizontal velocity, horizontal displacement. P, which is the vertical displacement and v is the velocity with which it was initially rolled preceding its fall and g is like the acceleration so this is a constant and this is something we have to keep a constant like g is obviously a constant but velocity is something we have to keep a constant when we're investigating um q and p um and here the g is the acceleration of free fall obviously and we have to design a laboratory investigate to show how q is related to p right and from that you get a hint that what they want you to change is in fact p in order to see a change in the value of q and you'd, you'd probably be able to tell that without this clear cut statement because how on earth are you gonna vary the displacement the horizontal displacement in order to see a change in the vertical that is um, impossible and we also have to be able to tell by the end of our theoretical experiment how we may be determined from the results of our experiment to determine the relationship between p and q so you like have two objectives you have to keep them in mind when you're doing all of this you don't have to miss them out you'll be losing valuable marks you need to draw a diagram to show the arrangement of your equipment and when you're writing it the lab report you have to keep in mind the procedure the measurements the variable control analysis of data and the precautions so number one first thing is to get a visual of the activists you're dealing with right so it's basically has to resemble all of this so if you were to do this, what would you do? Number one, there has to be some way of varying the height. And for that, you might take different books and you might use a different number of almost the same thickness of books in order to weigh the vertical displacement, in order to vary the vertical displacement. Right, that is something you can like attempt to represent this and please don't judge me on my drawing I'm pretty bad at this when I'm using a computer not that bad actually so you might actually represent this it's not necessary I believe but you can show that this is a tabletop Again, no judging my drawing skills. But you 
going to present this as being a tabletop. I don't think they're gonna so that you actually get an they get an actual idea of what you're doing. Right? And the number of bucks. And then you can have actually have um a vertically clamped ruler to sh so that you may use it to somehow measure the um, height the vertical height right that is a way that is all the thing you need to do so this is how we're wearing the vertical height and you can have a ruler clamped over here to show how the change is made and recorded you might want to draw this a bit closer and yeah <laughs> yep, you need to like expand it on this side. It should be over there because we want to show the retort stand as well. So uh, like, do me a favor, assume that this looks like a retort stand. So we have a ruler over here to make it the vertical displacement. There has to be some way of measuring the horizontal displacement. You might put a horizontally clamped ruler if you so wish it might be a bit difficult to show over here and what about the velocity the velocity needs to be the same why does it need to be the same because if you're familiar with projectile motion there are interesting equations one is that um q which is the horizontal displacement is dependent on something which is v cos theta into the time um, and v is actually the initial velocity in the scenario actually v is v cos theta is in fact just v because you're only having horizontal velocity to begin with so it's just v into t <clears throat> but one wonders where this t comes into play for that you need to keep in mind the <clears throat> um the formula for um, vertical displacement which is like s is equal to 1 by 2 kd square plus ut or there are quite a few you've studied this before v square minus u square is equal to 2 into a into s <coughs> so stuff matters because the one with t is the one you have to go with right see these are the things you need to be concerned with so if you have a different vertical velocity, vertical height, you're going to have a different time. That is something you know. But the thing is, if you have different velocities to begin with, different initial and final velocities, the final is actually the same. That's going to vary S as well. Right? Because at this point, we're going to have a value of z, 0 for the vertical, right? So that's what we think it is. But there isn't any, like, it's on a smooth surface. There's nothing that is sort of like pushing it along, right? So it's, if you were to imagine it, you might say it's that, like at the top of a parabolic pathway. There isn't any velocity to begin with, and it has to fall a certain height that is equivalent to s right right and because s is equal to 1 by 2 a t square plus u t this makes sense because u is like initial and we know initially we have a zero velocity so it's just s is equal to 1 by 2 a t square right so from that we know that the height is actually changing the time period for it to fall and that is basically equal to v into t. And so time is changing and v is also a determining factor. So we need to keep v a constant. It doesn't matter how long it is a v for. But if we, if it has v over here and we're expecting it to have v over here as well, that's not going to be the case because there will be friction. So we don't want it to be traveling a lot of distance before it falls off. That is what I'm trying to say here. How do we ensure that it has velocity v? Um, might have to do with acceleration how do you ensure something that it is moving at one velocity 
and we might use something like a force meter. <coughs> Right, and you might give it a certain amount of push with it that will give it a certain amount of acceleration for a certain amount of time so theoretically it will have the same value of velocity each time so you have to give it a certain amount of force at a set distance each time you repeat the experiment so that theoretically because it will have traveled the same distance before reaching the ridge, it would have experienced or it would have gotten the same amount of velocity. So the force probably needs to be a momentary force. I guess you can do this by hand as well by like if you mark this point as a point where you place the ball and you like poke it and you attempt to, to make sure that the, that the value of the poke each time is the same. That might work out but then there is a lot of um, chance of there being human error so the use of a pulley or a force meter because that's going to give a momentary push might be a good idea so along with this you have to like draw the ball over here and you can like totally label this as initial position of the ball and then this would be the final position and here it will here it will be at rest. You can write initial position of ball where u is equal to zero, final position where v is equal to v, or where v v v not is equal to v. V not might be just a general representation of velocity. And then you can have just something to measure where the final position is, and then you're gonna you're gonna equate that. G isn't a problem because for such small distances, G isn't going to vary by a amount that is actually going to affect anything. So, make the block, make this, make the initial, the final. You might actually um, represent this as stack of uniform thickness books. You might label this as the tabletop. You might have some sort of a sandbox over here in case... I don't know, the ball flies off and so it's probably gonna hit over there and take all of its energy so it doesn't continue bouncing off and causing some sort of a accident. So then this we need to we need to like identify what is the independent variable. Um the independent variable is the vertical displacement. So the dependent variable is gonna be the horizontal displacement right the controlled variable has to be the velocity v that is the horizontal velocity that needs to be the same and the distance on the upper horizontal surface the distance which it is accelerated for which it is accelerated needs to be the same so if for example we are using we have like sort of like connected this to a pulley system right and we like putting weights on the pulley and then the amount of distance where the ball moves due to the pulley has to be the same because the moment the pulley releases, it won't it won't any longer be pushing any sort of a force on the ball, causing it to accelerate. So there's a lot of different stuff. You don't have to go into detail. This is stuff you probably have done. This is a bit more complicated. So just give an idea that you know how to do that. So independent, dependent, controlled, initial velocity, or the distance the ball is accelerated from rest at a constant given acceleration so you know what you do is you basically vary the value of the vertical displacement by adding more books onto the stack and measuring the new displacement with the help of a vertical ruler that has been clamped and you can also write something like the use of um, set squares to ensure that the ruler is perfectly vertical. You might also mention the word that the ruler needs to be pretty close to the stack. 
right? And the use of another ruler to make the displacement covered. You may also say that this needs to be powered, covered with a small amount of sand so it doesn't bounce off and we know the exact position it was on or you may like paint it with something so that the position it initially hit will be marked off even if the wall and moves away slightly right so like you can have a range of the vertical velocity and it has to have a big enough value so that there will be big values of horizontal displacement so the percentage uncertainty will be low right because if we have a big range of values of vertical displacement we're gonna have larger values of the corresponding horizontal displacement something they often mark on and probably all the windows shut off so there isn't any air that is like um, interfering with the motion nothing of the sort Um, and the mass of the ball probably isn't going to have much of an impact. But I'd suggest that it has the same surface area each time. So it's going to face the same amount of air resistance that might actually stop. Um, that's not really going to have an impact though. So data analysis and if you get values, right? Fifties g q squared is 2 p v squared so that means that q squared has to be proportional to v and so if we draw a graph of q squared into v that might prove that you're right so but does it have to like go through the origin i'd say it has to because q squared is just 2 p v squared over g and because p is vertical that is something you're changing that is on x and q squared is basically on y right so from that you get that there isn't any sort of inter intersection and so if this is right and you like put q square on the y axis and you on the x axis and if the relationship is correct you should get a straight line through the origin but they also said something about how you can use a graph to get the value of v. That's easy. It's simply q squared into g over 2p is equal to v squared. Right? That is, I've just basically made um, v squared the subject of the formula they've already given. Right? And q squared over p is basically just the gradient. So you have to multiply the gradient of your graph with g, which is acceleration due to gravity and then divide by value of 2 that's it that is data analysis and say for precaution i've already told you about the whole sand thing breaking the fall of the ball so it doesn't hit you on the head so like i'm hoping you find this helpful thank you